Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I take this pile of parts and turn it into one of my metal forever roses. Stay tuned. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell so you can get notified on any of my next coming videos. Okay, so before we get started in this video, let's make sure that you have everything you need in order to do this DIY forever rose. So in the kit, you're gonna see that you have a little piece of scrap metal um, and a little piece of TIG wire to make sure that your machine is set up, especially for those of you who don't do a lot of welding um, and you don't set up your machine a lot to do body metal, it's a good idea to try and set it up, make sure you're not gonna blow a hole. And if you do, don't worry, just try it again, okay? But ideally, you just wanna make sure that your machine's set up properly using that. You're gonna see that there's uh, three rows of pedals. So make sure that you have three. You're gonna have your leaves two leaves and whatever base that you actually order. So you're gonna have your TIG wire, which is your stem, and then you're gonna have three little rubber stoppers for the bottom of your base, depending on which base you buy. Then we're gonna need a hammer, a couple pairs of just square nose pliers, one pair that can snip TIG wire, if not, just as long as you have something to snip your TIG wire to size. Uh, MIG pliers, once again, not necessary, but does help to have MIG pliers. You're going to need a couple pairs of needle nose pliers, and you're going to find as you start doing more of these roses, uh, if you plan on doing more than one, um, you're going to get comfortable with the pliers that you like, and you're going to notice that different pliers do different things for you. You're going to need a cold chisel. Uh, a block of wood of basically any size. It doesn't matter what kind of wood it is, uh, just any kind of wood. And that's for when we go to do our stenciling on our leaf. Tape for taping off when you paint. A lighter. Your desired paint colors. And brake clean to clean before you start painting. So these are the tools that you're gonna require. Um, it doesn't hurt to have a rubber mallet instead of just a hammer. You're gonna notice in this video, I use a rubber mallet. The reason for that is so that I'm not really crushing the rose as I'm shaping it into final shape. So the first thing we're gonna use is two pairs of pliers. So you're gonna definitely need a couple pairs of pliers for this DIY project. Um, you're gonna need a small TIG or a small welder, sorry. You could use a TIG welder if you wanted, uh, but ideally a small MIG welder is all you really need. I'm running 023 wire, just with Blue Shield 8, which is a 75-25 mix. It's 75% uh, argon, 25% CO2. Um, so let's get started. So ideally what you're trying to do is you're trying to replicate what a rose would look like. So if you actually look over at one of my previous roses that I've made, you're going to see that the petals are kind of formed to look like a rose once they all fold together. And we're gonna do this in stages. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're actually gonna grab one row of petals. You're gonna pick whatever side is nicest because there's always gonna be a bad side. The bad side, ideally, you want to be on the center of the rose. So as you go to grab these roses, you're gonna fold it away. You're gonna fold it away and trying to make it look somewhat natural, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. The best part about this is that when it isn't perfect, that's usually when it looks best. If it was all symmetrical and every single bend was exactly the same, and you were so meticulous about having all the bends exactly the same, it probably wouldn't look as good because then it starts taking the natural look away from this style of metal rose that I made. You're gonna do this for all three rows of the petals that you have. By the way, if you're worried about getting scratches or anything on your petals, uh, a little trick that I used to use um, is that I would just put tape around the edges of my pliers. So this is one of them. Don't get too caught up, like I said, making them all the same. Don't worry about too much about all the stages being totally different, or yada, yada, yada. It's just a matter of getting a shape started uh, because you can tweak it later and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so now that we have our petals completed and all bent up 
somewhat to how we want. So these aren't going to be completed yet. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a little bit. Um, you're going to be taking the tib wire and ideally creating just like pockets. So you're going to be welding them at the desired height, like so, in order from bottom to top. And you're going to be welding it with the TIG wire somewhat sticking up. So we're not going to worry too much about the leaves and the hard paste just yet, but we are going to start welding. At this point, you could use the supplied scrap steel and TIG wire to set up your machine to make sure that you're not going to blow through on your actual rows. Okay, so in this step, you're going to want to have something to hold the TIG wire. Uh, basically, it just makes it easier. It's not a must but it definitely makes it easier in order to hold your pedals in place so where you actually want them. In this case, I'm actually gonna be using a hole that I already have in my table and putting my TIG wire through it so that I can have the exact desired height that I want my rows to start at. Keep in mind, you wanna leave yourself enough TIG wire for you to lay your rows down, but then also have a, you're gonna have a tack there. So you're also gonna to need to put the next pedal section on top of that tack. You actually need a good, probably two inches, I would say. Okay. So if you guys are running the same machine as me, uh, this is just a Lincoln MIG Pack um, 140. So this Lincoln here, I'm running at four and a half wire feed to, they call it C, as my bolt. Make sure that your contact tip and nozzle are nice and clean. Um, you don't want to be dealing with a lot of spatter buildup just like this, um, mainly because you're not going to get your argon coverage. And when you're welding thin material like this, as soon as you lose argon coverage, it blows through and causes porosity and nothing but issues. So we're going to start by cleaning that. Okay, it's only we're all set up. A little trick too is when you go to cut your MIG wire, um, be sure to cut it on somewhat of an angle. And what it does is it creates a sharp point, creating almost like a like a needle point on the end of your MIG wire. So when you go to strike your arc, it actually strikes well much much easier than it normally would. So in this case, I'm gonna have to put my ground basically right on the device itself. I'm gonna bend up a couple of the pedals so that it lays nice and flat. Try not to leave the puddle going too long. It is only body metal. You don't want it burning through the bottom, especially on your first row because you can't hide it. So be sure to just do small little tacks. Um, you don't need a crazy amount of weld on the rows either, um, but you don't want it to also fall off. So. Basically, just a couple little tacks around there. So now, repeat this step, bending your pedals up so that it's not hitting the next one. And you can bend the other ones down now because it's not as critical. We do want them to be somewhat close to each other. Also, when you go to put your next row of pedals, try to line up these pedals in the center of the, the okay. next row. Make sure you're offsetting the rose petals from the previous row. Um, as you can see, I'm lining them up in the center of the last row that we tacked on. Um, the reason for this is so when you go to bend them all up, they kind of match up a little bit nicer than they would if you did. Not catastrophic if you don't line them up. Uh, however, it is much easier, much nicer. At this point, um, depending on how good you feel like you are, you could grab the TIG wire with a pair of pliers and melt off the tip. Um, 
while also kind of creating a ball of weld at the top to kind of seal all the roses together. If you don't feel confident with this step, not to worry, you could just use your plier to cut the pig wire and then weld it afterwards. You don't have to weld it and melt it off at the same time with their pliers. So at this point in time, you can actually do one of two things. You could take this little bald end off with a flapper disc. Personally, I like leaving it there. It makes it feel like more of a stem. Uh, it's also very strong, decent sized weld on there. So that's totally up to you guys, but whatever you feel necessary. So now it comes a time where we start forming. So we're gonna be taking our rows now and starting to kind of form it. So at this step, you're gonna need a pair of needle nose pliers, preferably two pairs. Um, and then you're gonna start actually forming the petals into a circle. So. The first row, you always want to be nice and tight, kind of working in a circle around the center. But you always wanna make sure they fit around each other in a sense. And like I said, it's not super critical. Just kind of imagine them going together as one. So, as you get them, the two are gonna kind of fit together real tight, and the rest are just gonna fall into place. So now, you're starting to form a rose. Now this isn't done, this is not exactly what it's gonna look like, but it is the beginning of what it's gonna look like. So now you're gonna keep repeating these steps all the way around until you get to the outside of the rose, and then I'm gonna show you the next step. As I'm bending it, it's actually forming the outside and creating kind of its own little pattern. So now that you got the rough idea, the rough shape of your rose created, you want to make it tighter. So right now it's almost like a lily or a lily bat, it's spread out quite a bit. So you want to tighten it all up. And you're going to do that using a rubber mallet. This is going to help it find its natural shape that it wants to be in. And then you're going to play around with it until it looks exactly how you want it to look. So as you can see, mine's kind of getting a little weird on the one side, so I'm going to bend those petals out because I want them facing more down rather than up. Just... Remembering too that roses, as they grow, they kind of follow the shape of each other. specific pattern with how it has to go back together. It's ideally like kind of whatever you want. There you have it. Our first step. So now we're going to take this part of our rose and we're just going to set it aside for the time being. Now we're going to start working on our leaves. So the leaves are where it kind of gets a little interesting. You gotta picture the veins of the leaves going through it. So when you do create them, 
I like to use a block of wood and a cold chisel. So at this step, what I'm gonna be doing is creating the veins of the leaf. And as I'm creating the veins of the leaf, it's actually gonna mold the leaf to be look like a leaf. It's gonna give it like a 3D shape. So pay attention to how I kind of do this. So first I start by going straight down the middle. So you're gonna see that I'm not driving at home. Nice little taps, and you're just going straight down the middle. Then, once you get it straight down the middle, you're gonna go the branches off. So you're gonna start at the back, and go up each side. I usually like to do three rows. It's not an exact science, but this is somewhat what you see towards the end. All right, kind of gave it a little bit of shape. So we'll repeat that on the second leaf. It's like so, same thing. Now we get to the weld that you're doing actually matters. You gotta weld the leaves off. Well, the leaves are very visible in the rows. The welds you don't really see, but the leaves you do. So what you're gonna wanna do is grab one of your pairs of pliers. And pay attention to how I hold the leaf up. You're gonna hold the leaf up and then you're gonna bend it down. It gives it a natural look. Be sure to clip your mid wire at this point because you definitely don't want it snubbing out on you in the middle of your weld. Okay, so something like that. Even though you do want a little bit of a weld on here, you don't want it to be too big because you still want it to be hidden by the leaf once you bend it down. Just like that. The next part is just your bait. So at this point, you want to make sure that you decide how large you actually want the rose to sit. Now, if you have a specific spot you plan on putting it, etc., you could change the height of it depending on where you weld it. And you're going to be welding the backside anyway, so you can cut it off and re-weld the back. So for this rose, proportionately, I would like it somewhere around here. Once you find your size, you have a nice pair of snips. Oh, I'm changing my settings a little bit hotter just because I am welding to 1 8 plate now and it's also 1 8 TIG wire. So once you have your size, you want to try and find something that you can line it up with so you're not trying to fold it and weld it at the same time. The reason we do it this way is so that we don't have a weld on the top of our our, our rows. The idea is to try and always hide all of our welds um, so that they're kind of not a part of the art. So make sure you line up your rows and your heart base with the face of the front of where you want your rows to be. Now if you don't really care where the front is or if you're using a circle base it probably doesn't matter but for a heart it almost has an arrow so you want to have the front of it pointing in the right direction. And there it is. So for now, I'm gonna use my little handy dandy hole that probably isn't supposed to be there in my table to show you how it stands up. That's how you make a rose that will last a lifetime. Thanks for watching.